Hello and welcome to Funny Running Stories, where we mash up running and laughter. I'm Martise Moore, the Run Faster Coach, and today I'm super excited to have Sean Conway with us today. Woo! Sean is going to share one of his funniest running stories with us. But before we get started, Sean, where are you from? Where am I from? That is quite complicated, actually. Oh. I, was, um, <laughs> I was born in Zimbabwe. Uh -huh, um, wow. I gr grew up in South Africa. Uh -huh. I have an English sort of side of the family on my mum's side, uh -huh. and I have an Irish side on my dad's side, and I now currently live in Wales. Wow. So, <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It is a little complicated. Bit of, bit of a mixture, you know. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So um, how long have you been running? Well, you know what? This, is, this surprises people, actually. I've only really ever done three official like proper runs no four actually mm -hmm. i've done four proper runs in my life uh -huh. um i ran a thousand miles the length of britain i ran 820 miles as part of the world's longest triathlon wow. i ran 300 miles when i ran across ireland um last year and then i've run the london marathon which to date is the only official marathon i've i've ever run um so those are the the four official runs I've done. Obviously, okay, I do a lot, so that's a lot enough of for four <laughs> lifetimes. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, but I, you know, I've not really done any other sort of organized running other than training. So mm -hmm. I've never done a park run. I've never done a half marathon mm -hmm. or anything like that. I sort of just run for myself, really, other than these big, long, month-long, thousand-mile ones, which I kind of really enjoy. You know. <laughs> Nice. All right. Well, that's great. So tell us your funniest running story. <laughs> well, this one's more embarrassing, I think, than, okay. than funny. Um, I mean, it, it, it's been, it's funny looking back at it now. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very, very embarrassing at the time. So when I was running the length of Britain, it was, it was just one day running from sort of Scotland, from Glasgow down towards Carlisle on the old Glasgow road. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a, big road and it's kind of busy like trucks go down it but there's a nice hard shoulder on the side so mm -hmm. it's kind of easy you can just put your headphones in and you don't have to worry about traffic and that sort of thing okay. but it was pouring with rain I mean mm -hmm. the type of rain where you you sort of try and open your mouth and you you know it fills up with water oh wow and anyway there was you know there were these trucks bombing past and now I'm running into traffic of course so the trucks are coming right towards me just so mm. I can see them okay and that sort of thing and I've noticed quite a lot of roadkill um, on, on this section of road, obviously, you know, busy roads and mm -hmm. you know, sort of dead badgers and quite mm -hmm. a few of them. And, and I was like, oh, that's disgusting. And anyway, these uh -huh. trucks were bombing past and spraying up everything from the road into my face. Mm -hmm. And I kind of didn't think of it at the time, but, you know, you'd see one truck and you'd close your mouth and you'd cover up and then... As soon as you uncover, there's another truck and you just get sprayed with all oh, this, wow. this <laughs> road muck, right? Yeah. Now, obviously, in this situation, you know, and I ran probably 30 miles that day, mm -hmm. which, you know, it takes me all day, really. So, yeah. you know, I've been out on the road, you know, eight hours, whatever, nine, ten hours, just constantly getting all this road muck into my face. And obviously, at some point, a bit of fermented, rotting badger uh, probably land, landed up in my mouth. So anyway, by the end of the day, that's not the embarrassing thing. By the end of the day, obviously now my stomach is starting to kind of rumble. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, there's something not, there's something not happy about it. I've eaten something, and it's probably a bit of rotting roadkill. Um, oh, gross! So now I'm like, okay, right now, now I need the toilet. Right, uh -huh. so I'm running along, but it's just fields. Like it's just like fields or kind of quite high hedges that you kind of mm -hmm. can't climb over or climb through it's all oh wow um, hawthorn and prickly stuff right mm -hmm. so i'm now looking for a place i can go to the loo and i'm going yeah. and I'm bursting i'm like oh my you know i can't just go on the side of the field because people will be able to see me but anyway eventually it just got too too serious so i, I sort of went into the field climbed uh -huh. this little fence and i and now I'm desperate. So I, uh -huh. I mean, I couldn't go too far in the field because there was another hedge. So I went, uh -huh. it was probably only about 20 meters. Anyway, uh -huh. I'm there and I'm like, okay, right. Is there a quiet moment? Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> I'm just like, I gotta go, I gotta yeah. go. Yeah. So I'm there doing my business. And anyway, uh -huh. I see a, a, a car coming in the distance and I'm uh -huh. like, oh, 
they're not going to see me. Like no one, no one looks out the side of the window, especially when it's pouring with rain. Yeah. You know, they're coming closer, and then I sort of like, who's in it? You know, you start questioning like, okay, right, if I do get seen, you know, what's going to happen? <laughs> you know. And anyway, eventually, like, and this this next bit was only a few seconds, but in my mind, it was like half an hour long because mm-hmm. I'm there. Pants around my ankles, my <laughs> gin, ginger bum facing the world, and and then the um, because obviously I'm on the side of I'm in, in traffic, so it's the passenger, the lady, mm-hmm. uh, that must have been the wife. You know, she's sitting there, and the next thing in slow motion, I just see her looking at me, and then I'm like midway through, right, going uh-huh. to the loo, and just on her face is just like <gasps> the whole thing. <laughs> And Aww. then obviously she did a shriek because then in the back seat <laughs> there's like three like toddlers Aww. who are then also suddenly look by <laughs> and just get this like look on their face like oh my god that's disgusting <laughs> and then it's just like obviously the mum goes don't look and then they're like looking more and then she's trying to like turn their face away yeah. behind them and then all of a sudden they're gone and they they're gone and then I'm just sitting yeah. there going can you go to jail <laughs> exposing yourself to three toddlers right. while going to the loo in the middle of a field? And uh, I was convinced. Anyway, I finished and I, I got back on the road. I was convinced they were going to do a U-turn, uh-huh. come back and just like the husband was going to beat me or <laughs> going to phone the police for some indecent exposure or something like that. Oh, no. But um, I'll, just never, I'll just never forget that moment we made eye contact. Right. Yeah, while I had my pants around my ankle. <laughs> oh, I think they had not, seen not enough, so they were they yeah. kept going. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, but it is so embarrassing when you just like there's nothing yeah. I could do, you know. Right. So anyway, that was that was pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. <laughs> In hindsight, oh, get it? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so why did you run across Britain? <laughs> Well, actually, that was the, the third and final leg of a, a length of Britain triathlon, something mm-hmm. that, that no one else even to this day has ever done before. So I swam it, well, I cycled it first mm-hmm. in 2008. I swam it in 2013. That was the okay. big one, 900-mile swim. And then to wow. finish off the triathlon, I, I ran, the, I think it was 1,011 miles just by myself with a rucksack, um, wow. uh, you know, camping wild and things like that, just to kind of have an adventure and, and be the first person to ever do a length of Britain triathlon, really. <laughs> yeah, so are like you in the record books? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Guinness, weirdly, Guinness kind of don't see those really extreme things as valid world record attempts. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I'm there. There's actually Discovery Channel made a documentary about that run. Oh. Um, Thank, thankfully, there was, there was no camera crew around when that episode yeah, happened. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that one's, you know, just logged in my memory. But um, yeah, th- that's on Discovery Channel and it's on iTunes and Amazon Prime, I guess. You can oh, what's that. it called? Uh, Sean Conway, Running Britain is, uh, is that one. And um, yeah, I was, I was very proud of it. It's, oh. it's a great little memory. And I've got a young son now. He's a bit uh-huh. too young to watch it, but yeah. I can't wait till he gets old enough to, to see daddy suffer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to check it out. I got to check it out. So do you have any long-term running goals? I mean, you've done quite a bit. Do you have anything on the horizon? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit too young to really kind of get into proper long distance ultra running i'm, I'm mm-hmm. 39 i turned 40 next year i always said i'm going to hold off on the proper regular running you know i mm-hmm. ran the length of britain 2015 i did the triathlon 2016 2018 mm-hmm. sorry 19 i ran across ireland so i have big gaps and in between i i do a lot of cycling mainly yeah. and that but i've always said i think when i'm in my 40s I'll feel better. I'll be at a better age to do some really long stuff. You know, I really (laughs) enjoy, you know, a thousand miles for me is kind of my minimum. I think, I think I feel, I feel I'm getting into my stride, you know, (laughs) it takes me about three weeks to get into my stride and I can, you know, if I, if I don't push too hard and I recover Uh well, I I do about a, a thousand miles in maybe four weeks. So that's, coming into my own there so I'd love to do a really long run one day like a year long you know maybe when my kids have left and gone to university or something Mm -hmm. I'd love to spend a whole year my wife's into running as well so maybe both of us will will just go running 
for a year, you know. <laughs> Although okay. she's gunning for us to buy a yacht and sell the house and buy a yacht and go sail around the world. Oh, but I think nice. maybe a running one would, would be sort of cool, you know, somewhere somewhere nice, you know, where you, you don't have to maybe carry as much food. So mm -hmm. running along the, the Mediterranean, I think would be amazing, you know, mm -hmm. running along yeah. Spain, into France, Italy, down mm -hmm. eventually into sort of Croatia, um, and eventually in Greece, really, that would be, I think, a pretty amazing run. So, yeah, so. yeah I've, got, I've got loads of ideas, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds cool. Well, I would probably drive, but it's <laughs> everything, you know. <laughs> so, well, where we, can we follow your, your running journeys? I mean, definitely if you do that, we, we want to make sure we don't miss it. Yeah, well, um, the next proper run I'm doing is actually... I, I've sort of come up with this idea of the, the January 500 kilometer club, which is basically if on the 1st of January, you run one kilometer and on the 2nd of January, you run two kilometers, then three kilometers, four kilometers, all the way through to running 31 K at the end of January, you'll actually run 496 kilometers by the end of January. Um, and yeah, it's something I've thought of for years, but I've never really had the time. Uh -huh. And because we're all kind of in lockdown now, it's something I can do this January. So yeah, yeah. follow me on, on Instagram, Sean Conway Adventure on on Instagram and see see how my my month of January progresses. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of urging loads of people to uh, to get on board with this 500 club. I want to kind of create this. Oh community. yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, Jan the January 500 club and you, you know, one, two, three, four. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I've just been looking at my diary and, I'm quite a slow runner. I'm, you know, I'm sort of four or five miles an hour kind of guy, really. Mm -hmm. um, so actually for me to do, to, you know, 30K, you know, that's mm -hmm. probably going to be four hours, really, maybe five hours with a, a lunch break in between. Okay. And that's every day towards the back end of January. Yeah. So that last week of January, it's going to be, especially when you've got an 18 month old toddler running around. And, uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's going to be a busy month. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So we'll definitely put that in the show notes. So hopefully people will follow you and get inspired. At least hang out till kilometer 20 or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's those last 10 days, I'm not going to lie, especially when the weather's a bit miserable and it's dark yeah. and cold. But, yeah, uh, that, we'll watch that. you do the rest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for sharing that uh non-public moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty embarrassing so yeah <laughs> yeah but it was fun thanks for helping us reminisce and put a smile on our face you know especially these yeah. days so um you keep running and laughing and we'll we'll join you virtually and fantastic, uh, yeah. please stay safe we'll yeah. see you on you... on instagram fantastic see you later <laughs> keep running everyone ciao bye